Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Misty Hino with Misty Hino's Lego Robotics. Today's video is going to be about three things that you might be overlooking when you're trying to win a sumo bot match. Now, I started doing sumo bot matches back in 2015. I've probably seen over a thousand sumo bot matches. And today I'm going to give you those three tips that you might be overlooking. Now you might be saying, hey, Miss Chino, should you just be giving away these answers to kids? And it's not necessarily giving it away. They happen so quick that they might just not be seeing it. So here we go with number one. The number one uh, mistake that I see students doing when they're doing a sumo bot match. Now this is assuming that you set the robots up side by side and they have to turn in order to uh, push each other off the table. But the one mistake that I see is students um, have their bot turning the wrong way. Now what I mean by that is when your robot is side by side, you want your robot to be turning in towards the other robot. I see a lot of robots turning away towards the outside of the table. And what's happening is if the other opponent is turning to the inside and yours is turning to the outside, they're going to see you quicker, they're going to hit you quicker, and they're going to push you off faster. So you have two options on this one. Either make sure that your robot, when you set it up, always turns to the inside, or have two different programs. One that turns to the left inside, and one that turns to the right inside. That way you're not giving your opponent that extra advantage or edge by seeing you quicker and then pushing you off the table faster. The second thing that I see mistakes um, with students in sumo bot competitions is they're always thinking that speed is the best thing. They're cranking up their motor speed to 100% and they're thinking that's going to be the key to winning and it's not. The key to winning is going to be torque. You want your robot to have torque instead of speed. Now here's what I mean. When you gear down, you're giving your robot torque, which means if you're going up a hill, you're not sticking that thing if you're you know, driving a car, you're not sticking that thing in like fifth gear. You're gonna put it in a lower gear to give you more torque or power to get up that hill. It's the same thing in sumo bot competitions. You don't want speed, you want torque, which means those motors are going to just work extra hard to push something. You want this thing to have more power rather than more speed. So instead of cranking those gears or those motors up to 100%, gear down, which means you're gonna have a smaller gear coming out of your motor that's going to be rotating a bigger gear. If you're doing EV3, it's probably going to be a, an eight tooth gear that's spinning a 40 tooth gear. Spike Prime, I believe that might be a 12 tooth gear spinning a 36 tooth gear. I'm not 100% I'm not sure on how many teeth you know, those kits have. But regardless, you want the smaller gear rotating a bigger gear that's going to give you more torque, that's going to give your bot more pushing power to push the other robot off the table. Now you might be saying, well, Miss Chino, if that makes my robot go slower, it will turn a little slower, which means when you first start off, it might turn a little slower and the other robot might spin faster and see you first. But when you get to just pushing you're going to end up pushing the other robot off and it won't matter necessarily that their robot sees you quicker, you'll have more power. And the third thing that I see mistakes with sumo bots is that students just don't ever, well, I shouldn't say ever, but a lot of students don't ever think about using a medium motor or a second motor other than their drivetrain motors to lift up the other opponent. You know, when you're looking at a real sumo, sumo bot match, you're trying to get under the opponent to push them off. So what, what's better way to win is to somehow lift the other robot up and push them off. So utilizing 
that extra motor other than the drivetrain motor is something a lot of students don't think about. And I know why. They probably don't want anything interfering with their ultrasonic or distant sensor because it's right there in the front. And if you have some kind of motor that's going to lift up, it could possibly get in the way of that ultrasonic sensor. But if you can figure that out and somehow get the motor to lift and push, you're going to win more times than the, than the robot that's just pushing and pushing and pushing. Because somehow if your robot can have some type of ramp or something that can get underneath the other robot and you're pushing also, that's going to be amazing. Now you might be thinking, well, well Mr. Gino, how does that work with the program? You can multitask, which means as soon as your robot sees the other robot, you can have the robot, you know, you can have your motor go up and down, up and down as it's pushing um, because you don't want it to just necessarily, if it just goes up, then it's kind of useless. You want to necessarily have this thing go up, down, up, down. So hopefully you can catch the other robot on your up and push that off the table. But a lot of students don't even think about that. So the next time you're in a sumo bot match, consider, and you're going to have to be very careful about how you place your ultrasonic sensor, maybe face it down and have it be away from the front of your robot or figure out a way to have it, your, you know, that motor in the front and your distance or ultrasonic sensor there so it can see the other robot. And then again, have that thing go up and down as you're pushing. And that should definitely give you the advantage in that sumo bot contest. So all of these three things, you know, if you can do one of them, you should be a whole lot better than if you do none at all. And you're improving your chances of winning that sumo bot competition. So hopefully you guys found this helpful. I would say try one or two or, you know, if you can, all three. And that should be an amazing sumo bot robot that you have. Okay, guys, thank you so much for checking this video out. I am Mr. Hino from Missingles Lego Robotics. I'm out. He's out. He's out. We got this. We got this. We got this, guys. Hey guys, Mr. Hino here. Thank you so much for watching. And if you love robotics, don't forget to check out these videos also because they're cool. Okay guys, take care.